All right, guys, welcome back. In this section, we are going to be taking our reverse shell program to the next level. For starters, previously we had one server and one client and we connected both of them using a connection object. But what if we wanted to connect to multiple clients? That is, what if we wanted to control more than one computer from a single server? Right now, if you want to have multiple clients, you'll have to create multiple servers. But that is going to be costly and not very feasible to be honest. I'll take the example of a hacker again. Let's say the hacker wants to affect hundreds of computers. Will you make hundreds of servers? Obviously, no. Another example would be, let's say you are a system administrator and you need to have a remote access to all computers in the lab or in the workstation. In this case too, our current reverse shell program won't work. So in this video, we'll add the functionality of handling all the clients from one single server Python file and build a multiple client support system. But before we get into that, let me explain it to you how it's going to work. Every time we accept a connection, we get back two outputs. First is a connection object and the second is the address list. Using the connection object, we can send commands to another computer and the address list contains information like port and IP address. So what are we going to do is that we are going to create an empty list or you can call it an array of connection objects and addresses. And every time we connect to a client, we are going to append or add it to that list. Then we can loop through the list of clients connected to our server and choose the one that we want. So we will have to write a program that will do two tasks at once. The first task is to listen and accept connection from other clients and store them in a list. And the second task is sending commands to an already connected client and that client can be a victim or your friend. But you must be thinking, how can we do two tasks from the same program at the same time? This is achieved by a concept known as threading. You can think of threads as a multitasking support system. For example, I'm talking to you right now and thinking at the same time. So one of my thread is handling my speaking abilities and the other thread is handling my thinking. In the same way, the first thread is going to listen and accept connection from other clients and the second thread is going to handle connection with an already connected client and send commands to that client and that client can obviously be a victim or your friend. Now, if you have any confusions about what we talked about, don't worry about it too much because now we are going to be coding our actual server.py program and things are going to become more clear. Now, before I make any kind of changes to server.py, what I want to tell you is that I've uploaded the current code to this link, that is the github.com atrebhard reverse shell. And you can find all the code in this reverse shell version one folder. If you click on it, you'll find there are two files, client.py and server.py, and they basically contain the same code that is shown over here. Now in server.py, we are going to be making some changes, but the client.py file is pretty much going to remain the same. So in our server.py file, the first thing we need to do is actually import some packages. The first package will be of threading because obviously we'll be using thread to do some tasks. And then the second thing we'll be using is time. I'll get into this a little bit later. And the last thing we need to import is a queue. Actually, we need to use from queue import queue. And we'll be using this and you'll understand what it actually does when you are implementing the thread system. So next thing we are going to do actually create a constant. Let's call it number of threads. And it's going to be equal to two because why is it two and not three and four? Because we need to do two things simultaneously and not more than two. And that is why we only need to create two threads. Uh, after that, we are going to type a constant and call it job number. And we are going to create a list and put one comma two. So this one is basically the first thread and this two is the second thread. So the job of the first thread is to basically uh, listen for connection and accept connection when any of the client is trying to connect. And the job of the second thread is to basically send commands to the client and handle connection with existing clients. So this job number is basically the thread number which we are talking about. After that, we are just going to create a variable and let's call it Q equals to Q. And obviously you'll understand what this means when we get into the thread implementation part because we are just creating variables and lists right now. So I'm not going to get into it. The next thing we are going to do is create two empty lists. So first list we are going to call as all connections and we'll initialize it with empty. And the second thing we are going to do is create an address empty list. And let's press enter so that it is some space. 
So why are we actually creating these two empty lists? So if you remember, every time we connect to a client is going to give us two output. So for example, if we just scroll down, so every time there is, it goes into this socket accept function and it accepts the connection using this accept function, it gives us two output. First is the connection object and second is an address list. This address list contains the IP address and the port number and this connection object is used to send commands and close connections. So similarly, every time we connect to clients or we connect to multiple clients is going to give us a lot of connection objects and a lot of addresses. So we are going to put all of those connection objects inside this all connections list and all of those IP addresses and ports inside this all address list. So that is where these two lists will come in handy. Now, when handling multiple clients, the process of creating a socket and the binding the socket is going to be pretty much the same. But the way in which we accept the connections and we send commands are going to be a little bit different. So what we are going to do is we are just going to remove all of this stuff. And in the next video, we are going to look into how are we going to handle connections from all of these different clients. So I'll see you in the next video.